Hey, what's up, Card Kingdom fan? Kenji's back for another draft of Crimson Vow. Yes, we got Crimson Vow ready and available now. And uh, yeah, I've done some drafting um, on stream already, but this will be the first recorded one for Card Kingdom. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Let's just dive right in. Our opening rare being the Demonic Bargain. Yeah, not a card that is uh, any good in limited, I will say. Um, too often, this is just going to mill or exile, I guess, half of your deck immediately. So don't think this is good enough in limited. Uh, certainly way too risky. The cards that are stand out here to me are going to be the Child of the Pack. Very, very good werewolf. 2-5 that makes its own token, so it's a win condition by itself. And then like Diver Scab. 3-5 Exploit that when you exploit puts a creature uh, either on the top or bottom of its owner's library, depending on what they choose. I'm going to go ahead and slam dunk this uh, Child of the Pack here, though. This card's been super amazing for me. And uh, again, a card that can just win the game by itself is uh, certainly a card that you want to look for um, when you're drafting, especially early on. Uh, pick number two, sadly, does not have any good red or green cards that I would want a second pick. I do like Mulch a lot, uh, but it doesn't really pair with the red and green as much as it does like green and blue. Uh, in green blue, you get a lot of good graveyard synergies, but that's not the case here. Uh, best cards in this pack, I think, are like the Brinecomber, another pretty solid creature that uh, can just kind of go off on its own. Uh, Lumberknot's pretty decent. In essence, it's like a four mana four four that can make all of your big butt creatures do more damage. And then I've been really happy with Scattered Thoughts, just a great card draw spell. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the Brine Comer here. It looks a little bit awkward taking a blue-white card after taking a red-green card initially, but it's uh, it's pick number two. You want to stay open and see what you get past. And here, we're getting past an Angelic Quartermaster, so pretty happy with my pick here. 5-mana, um, 3-3 three, three flyer, already okay and limited, but this one comes attached with two extra 1-1 one, one counters uh, for your other creatures. This doesn't put a counter on itself, sadly. Uh, so you can't make this a 4-4 and then get another counter somewhere else. But as a big flyer, it's just good enough as is. Uh, other pretty solid cards in the pack. I do like Fierce Retribution, good white removal spell with the new ability called Cleave. Uh, Cleave, you can um, get, the, get one effect or another depending on if you pl uh, pay the Cleave cost. The Cleave cost is always gonna give you a better effect so for two mana, you can kill an attacking creature, or for six mana, you can kill any creature. But pretty easy, Angelic Quartermaster here. Oh, <laughs> yes. And now we're going to go full in on the blue-white deck as we get a fourth pick, uh, Brian Comer number two. And so we're really going to be looking on the um, cards that have all of these disturb abilities. There are a bunch of disturbed creatures in this format that come back as enchantments. And uh, the Brian Comer really wants to utilize those. I do want to make a note of this Traveling Minister, though. I do like this card a lot, but Brian Comer number two. And yeah, looks like uh, Blue White's coming our way pretty nicely. Panicked Bystander is decent. Um, I think it's probably still worth taking over the uh, Disturbed Creatures we were just mentioning still, though. Especially since the Disturbed Creatures are all, for the most part, common. And uh, you can pick them up later. So I think I like taking the Panicked Bystander here first. And going from there. But yeah, this is a fantastic start. Brian Comer is one of those cards that you would look at and think that it has flying by itself. It does not. It makes flying creatures. Um, but it is not a flying creature itself. So that's, that's something that's really important to note. Because... Uh, especially with new formats, you know, you, you want to make sure you double double and triple check what the card does before you, uh, well, make a silly mistake. Anyways, next pack, got some more nice creatures here or like Nurturing Presence, which would be nice with the Brine Comer. I don't know how early you're supposed to take this type of card, but I'm going to go ahead and take it right now because I think five drops are really replaceable. And even though like the Heron Blessed Geist is pretty good for this deck. Um, I think I like taking the, the cheaper spell here first. 
I've actually not done too many blue-white decks in this format, though, but given that I've gotten two Brian Comer, I mean, they were in the first three picks, four picks or whatever, I think it, uh, I think it could make a lot of sense to try to do something fun like that. Okay, next pick here for us. Only one blue or white card, and that's Fear of Death. And surprisingly, um, this is a pretty good card in this deck, right? Because you're going to have so many Disturbed cards, like our Brian Comers have Disturbed themselves and all those uh, other Disturbed cards I was talking about, uh, milling yourself can often be, in essence, drawing a card. So you can like turn off one of your opponent's creatures uh, and get some extra value from the graveyard that way. So that's not a bad pickup. As we get, it's okay, some blue-white cards here. The Scab is kind of a non-bow in these type of decks. I like it in blue-green or blue-black, but in blue-white, you don't really want to exile your own creatures. Um, Binding Geist has been super under-impressive or under-performing. Um, I think this is like the least effective of the Disturbed cards. And plus... You're enchanting your opponent's creatures with this and not your own. So here we're just going to take the Supernatural Rescue. A card I've actually been somewhat uh, surprised with. It's not like amazing or anything, but it actually does a decent amount of work, uh, especially when you can consistently give it the flash ability. And now we've got a nice pickup here on the wheel. Ninth pick, Kindly Ancestor. That's one of those disturbed creatures we were looking for, for sure. There should actually be a few Kindly Ancestors that can wheel. Um... I think more important than the Kindly Ancestors, although the, although their lifelink is nice. Uh, I don't remember what they're called. They're one drops, though. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer with Disturb to give a creature plus one plus one in flying. As we somehow wheel Scattered Thoughts here. One of the better cards, I thought, in the pack initially. Uh, another okay card in this deck is the Steelclad Spirit. 3-3 three, three Defender that... Uh, Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you know, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender, so you can often turn that on pretty easily. But Okay, Cradle of Safety. If we're going all in on a creature, we definitely want to have ways to protect it, and this is an enchantment that does so. Very nice pickup. Yeah, our deck's looking really good. Uh, I don't know how to feel about the Neville Gas Beguiler. I think it's decent. Usually these big tappers... Uh, are better than they initially look. But I don't know if I want to take it over like a bounce spell here. I'm not sure if that's right. I think, like, even if I were to play one of the Nebelgast, I wouldn't want more than one, so it doesn't feel like a high-priority pickup. As we get another Fear of Death, pretty solid. Yeah, this, this deck is looking real nice. As we get the last few pickups here in pack number one. And we open a winged portent. Three mana instant. Draw a card for each creature with flying you control. And then the cleave is six mana and green. And then just draw a creature for each oh, sorry, draw a card for each creature you control. Hmm. You know, that doesn't actually seem that bad with the double brine combers, but I don't think it's something I'm going to pick over, say, just this Drog Skull Inventory. Um, this is the classic bear in this deck. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Disturb 4 of giving a creature plus 2 plus 2, so just solid value. Nice Disturb card that's also a Spirit. We got another Angelic Quartermaster here. Passing a Shield Basher is pretty good. Another Nurturing Presence, which I'm still not sure how good that is. Chill of the Grave is fine, although obviously better for the zombie deck. But yeah, another Quartermaster is really solid. Arm the Cathars. Uh, I'm not sure how good this card is. It seems like you could push a lot of damage, but I'm probably going to save that for if it wheels. Right now we just have another good Disturbed Creature, the Gutter Skulker. 4 mana 3-3, three, three, can't be blocked as long as attacking alone. And then Disturb uh, it turns into an enchantment with the same ability, so not bad. Certainly good enough for our blue-white Disturb enchantment deck. I'm actually surprised I've never drafted this deck before. Because I've done a handful of drafts at this point. And uh, this seems like one of the 
I don't know, the signpost color pairing. So a little bit surprised that uh, this is the first time I'm starting to do it. Ooh, mama. Oh, here's that one drop I was talking about, uh, the one with flying, the lantern bear. That's the name of it. So I think this is a really, really nice one in these decks, but it's pretty hard to pass a Whispering Wizard here. I mean, there's even a Thirst for Discovery, just a fantastic card draw effect, but I think the Wizard is going to take um, the cake just by a little bit. 4 mana, 3, 2. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying, and this ability triggers only once each turn. So, uh, yeah, not much to say here. Whenever you cast any non-creature spell, you get a 1-1 one, one flyer. And, of course, any of the dis Disturbed cards are non-creature spells as well. So, in this type of deck, you can you can turn that on very easily. We've seen a couple of Braids go pretty late here. It doesn't really matter. Like, we're super locked into this deck. So, let's just take another Inventory. Is and, uh, yeah, be happy. Mm, this pack's pretty bad. I guess I'll take an Evolving Wilds couple more red cards, but those ones aren't anything to write home about. Yeah, all right, we'll take Syncopate. I don't know if I'm going to main deck that, but we might um, we might sideboard it. Seems like there's nothing wrong there. Yeah, pack number two hasn't been as good as pack one was, but it's still been good enough, I would say. As we get like a Heron of Hope over nothing. And again, another card I don't think really wants to be in this particular deck. Although I guess the Heron of Hope is good with like the Quartermasters. Like if you make this a 3-4 that can... 3-4 Flyer that can uh, turn into a Lifelinker, that's not awful. I guess right now the Supernatural Rescue is probably on the chopping block as my worst. Aura. I guess we need more ways to self-mill more than anything, feels like. Because <clears throat> let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we have seven uh, current Disturbed cards. We'll probably end up running that Heron, I would guess. Okay, we did wield a Winged Portent. I'll take it. I don't think I need to take a third Fear of Death right now, and this card could get there. We'll see about that. Because right now, let's see, one, two, I mean, this one makes it three, four, five, six, seven. So kind of like seven flyers right now with the potential for a lot more, depending on if like the Whispering Wizard or the Brian Comers trigger more than once. Question is, you really need this to be drawing two cards for it to be playable in a only blue deck. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for now, we'll, we'll move it to the board. We'll see. Got another Nurturing Presence on the wheel, sure. Again, another card I haven't tried too much of, but maybe worth a shot. Ah, okay, the Steelclad Spirit coming back is actually pretty good here as well. I'm passing all these Childa Graves, but that's probably fine. I actually don't want to run these Fear of Deaths too much if I don't have to. They're good with the Disturb, but I'd rather be proactive than reactive. And now that we have, like, two Nurturing Presents, we really want to just pick up, like, more Cradles and stuff. Oh, yeah, we wield the Lantern Bearer and the Cradle. Well, sadly, I'm going to take the, the bearer here, even though I said I just wanted to pick up more cradles, but that was a great wheel. Yeah, this deck looks super fun. I'm not sure how it's going to play out, but it looks super fun. Okay, one top-end Dreadlight Monstrosity can't be terrible. And, uh, yeah. It's felt like this format, I've been able to pick up basically enough playables uh, in the first two packs. Like, we're going into pack three, and we basically already have a deck, so it's a good feeling. 
good place to be. Uh, sadly, our rare is not one that we're going to take. A good rare, for sure. One of those Piper effects, but uh, sadly not one we're going to take here. For us, we have like Griff Rider, which has been super underperforming for me. Parish Blade Trainee, which has been overperforming for me. And then like Wanderlight Spirit. This is not a deck where we really want to run the Cobbled Lancer for similar reasons to uh, that 2-5 that draws a card. Because we don't really want to exile our creatures from our graveyard. We want to be casting them from the graveyard. I just don't think this Griff Rider is good enough though. I think here I'd honestly rather just take the Wanderlight Spirit. Even though this feels like a worse card, I think it's actually better in this deck. So let's do that. It's, again, it's either that or the Parish Blade Trainee, but I'm, I'm happy to take the Flyer here instead. Aha! That, on the other hand, is a fantastic pickup. This is the Mirror Hall Mimic. Four mana clone. A lot of the clones these days, they only target your creatures, or rather they can only copy your creatures. But this one does target... Or rather, uh, copy any creature on the battlefield. So, uh, if your opponent has something good, you can copy that. And then the Disturb ability, um, you can make a continuous supply of those. Uh, so, pretty nice clone effect. And definitely the pick here over, sadly, Thirst for Discovery. <laughs> Another really, really good pack here for us. As we get a Giralf Visionary Stitcher. This card is meant uh, more so for the blue-black deck where you get a bunch of zombies, but just this having this ability is super good. Being able to kind of blank removal on some of your creatures, uh, turning them into flyers, and I mean, even in this deck, we're going to be able to sacrifice some of our Disturb cards uh, for value, so seems like a fantastic pick up here. What am I missing? I'm missing removal, I guess? Yeah, this deck is all about just blue-white flyers kill you, kill you, kill you. I don't actually think I have a single removal spell. So in fact, maybe I should be taking these Childa Graves now. Passing a Howling Moon. It's a fun card. Uh, Taxidermist is good. I guess we could take a Beguiler for tap, which is like slow removal. But I think I like the Chill of the Grave now. A little bit of tempo. And really, in this kind of deck, that's all we need. Like, we're going to be able to fly over the opponent the majority of the time, I think. So this feels right. Um, let's see. Okay, another Cradle of Safety. Excellent. I did say I wanted that. And that will probably be the last card in the deck, unless we find something crazy good a little bit later here. Um, do I want to cut like this rescue perhaps? I think the rescue could probably be cut. I mean, the spirit is not amazing. Yeah, I think I can cut the rescue here instead. Go something like this. Yeah, looks good though. I'm a little bit sad that uh, we didn't see another Brine Comber, given that I got two in the first couple picks. And then t two more packs didn't uh, yield any of them, but <laughs> what are you going to do? I guess what? That was pick five? So technically, we still have three more packs we haven't even seen. Could still be some goodies here. Yeah. Cruel Witness is good. 3-3 three, three Flyer for four with Upside. Another Nurturing Presence could be okay. I feel like the Cruel Witness is better than the Heron of Hope in this deck. Because we're not doing any life gain synergies, so... 2-3 just going to be worse here than a 3-3 it feels like. Although... <laughs> do I just want to go all in on Nurturing Presence? I kind of do. <laughs> uh, is that crazy? I kind of want to just go all in on the nurturing presence. All right, let's have fun. Let's try it. Another cruel sa or not cruel safety, cradle of safety here. If we want to, maybe play that over alchemist retrieval. Again, just go all in our on our game plan. 
Sideboard Lantern of the Lost. Yeah. Cobbled Lancer is great, but again, not for this deck. I like this. I actually wish we had more Steelclad Spirits now since I have so many enchantments, but... Another Chill of the Grave if we wanted to. Don't think so. Oh, Lunar Reject... Man, I probably want to run the Lunar Rejection. This is a lot better than the Alchemist because it cycles. That's probably worth running. What am I cutting then? Maybe I do just cut the Chill of the Grave instead. That makes sense. All right, some more playables, but not exciting cards. Yeah, I'm digging this. This, this looks really solid. What's our dream sequence? Don't even know. Like turn three, Brian Comer, turn four, Nurturing Presence, and just go off, holding up Cradle of Safety. <laughs> this deck could be real fun, I think. This deck could be really, really fun. All right, uh, what, one more pick? I have an Evolving Wilds, I guess we run. And then just go 8-8. Eight, eight. Split it down the middle with 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, all right, looks good. Here we are, Crimson Vow, little blue-white Disturb deck. Let's see how it plays out. Stay tuned. Okay, here we are for round one of this Crimson Vow draft. On the draw here with eh, what appears to be a reasonable enough hand. Opponent on a mulligan to six. And yeah, good enough. We only have one of our enchantments and uh, none of the brine combers or whatever, but I think we can probably try to make do with this. Ooh, Cradle of Safety now, too. I think we still want to just lead with Panicked Bystander, though, over to the Steel Clad Spirit. Because it's not like we're going to be playing enchantments for the next couple turns in a row. Sure. Don't really care if that gets syncopated. Let's just lead on Geralt. Mono counters over there from the opponent. But all the cards they're countering, I don't actually care about. As they play a Cruel Witness. All right, land here for Wizard would be huge. Oh, that was so important. If I got to play Whispering Wizard here, I don't think we could lose. Whispering Wizard into Presence with the Cradle of Safety was our dream curve out. Oh no, this is so brutal. Okay, well, I'm going to go for it though. I think we're going to fall too far behind if I don't, so. I'm going to go for the presence. Hope that it works out. Okay, and that's good. Looks like the opponent didn't have anything there. I don't know if they're mono blue or if they're missing a color. But very good if they don't attack here. That means they probably are missing a color if they don't. And that gives us a window of opportunity to go wizard and then to presence into safety the following turn. But it looks like they are attacking. Okay, so we'll take three. Go ahead and pop this wilds for a plains. Ooh, there's the brine comber. Yeah, we really want to draw land next turn, don't we? I 
land for Brian Comer. And actually, I guess we don't want to tap out. We don't want to go Brian Comer into Nurturing Presence. We just want to go with Nurturing Presence into Hold Up Cradle of Safety. But yeah, four cards in their hand. They're most likely missing a full-on color here. Oh my gosh. Um, well, I guess if they're just going to pass, we have time then. Remember, this can't attack unless I've played an enchantment this turn. So next turn we go Nurturing Presence on the Brian Comer and just attack with everything, I guess. This is going to be game over for sure. Counter a spell? Okay. Well, they did have another counter. Oh, the enchantment actually has to enter the battlefield, so I don't get to attack with my uh, steel-clad spirit, do I? Hmm. Well, that's awkward. All right, well, let's just run out another brine comber then. I guess I'll go ahead and attack in with just this. We've already got the value off of it. And the 3-3 three, three flyer is kind of holding off the majority of the rest of my team. All right. I mean, I think they were just missing lands or whatever, so. Hmm. Interesting game. Uh, they have a million counters. I mean, all of my spells are pretty cheap, but yeah, I guess I don't need to really sideboard all that much. Let's just run it back. Go, go, game two. Okay, here we are for game two. Uh, one lander on the draw here. We're going to mulligan that down to six. And yeah, I guess we're going to keep this six with double brine comber and double cradle of safety. Not great, but it'll have to do. Turn one Lantern Bearer. Yeah, that's fine. Aha! So there is their second color. So they were blue-green. Um... I mean, there's definitely merit to not casting anything here, since we know they have so many counters in their deck. I almost like waiting. Yeah, I guess I'm going to play Evolving Wilds here and not let them get good use of their mana if they're just going to keep going with passing. All right, they have their own Whispering Wizard. Go ahead and get a Plains with the Wilds. Oh yeah, and now we're going to play our own Whispering Wizard for sure. Nature's Embrace. And they're going for the ramp here. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so they can syncopate unless I pay two? 
I guess they have the other counter in their hand then. All right. Ah, Siphon Essence, sure. Well, now I can cast this as an enchantment, right? Okay, yeah, we might as well. And obviously we don't mind if this trades away. It's good value for it too. Wolfkin Outcast, 5-4, turns into a 6-5, that if it or another wolf dies, they draw a card, sure. Wow, it's a pretty good draw, two mana bounce that thing. <laughs> Alright, let's attack with all of our flyers. Deal. And then play out our second Brian Comer and just pass. Howling Moon. Okay. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target Wolf or Werewolf. You can target Splendor Winter Plank Caster's second spell each turn. Create a 2 2. Damn. It's kind of spicy. Sure. Go ahead and bounce their wolf. Make a 1 1, draw a card. Oh man, that's a good draw too. We can like discard our infantry and whatnot for extra value. But let's go ahead and attack with all of our flyers here first. They're probably going to trade off for one of them. Take two, and I'm going to main phase Scattered Thoughts, hold up Blue Source. Ooh, man, fantastic hits. I guess, I guess I'm going to grab Land and Mimic, play the Land and Pass. Wow, this is disgusting. Don't really care if they just cast out their big werewolf. Sure. Um, I think I want to press the clock. And what I'm going to do here is Cradle of Safety, my 1-1 one, one flyer. This is going to make another 1-1 one, one flyer, but also make it... So that uh, we have five points of damage in the air this next turn. And now if they want to get, uh, get rid of my biggest flyer, they have to kill this, which would in turn give me an extra value from the graveyard. And now we can just pump up from the graveyard. This deck is just so good. <laughs> oh my god. Put them on a two-turn clock here. So much value, my gosh, and I'm still holding up Cradle of Safety with two more spells in hand. Like, what are they even going to do? Yeah, all right. Nice little 1-0 here. Let's go win two more. Okay, here we are for round two of this Crimson Vow draft. We've won the die roll, and ooh, this hand is not good. No blue source. Both of our five drops. We're going to go down to six. And that hand is much better. Okay, perfect. Uh, I guess I'm going to just pitch one of the five drops. Or rather, pitch the five drop. I guess I could pitch a land here too. That's actually not crazy to pitch a land, but I'm, I, I guess it's just safest to pitch the five. 
We have card draw spells and whatnot, so I think I'm going to play it a little bit safe. Now, hopefully I don't just rattle off like four lands in a row. Drawing one there is fine. Hopefully we don't draw too many more. Wow, okay. Now, looking back on it, I wish I certainly had just played out um, our mulligan to land, because if we had like the Angelic Overmaster plus a land in our hand instead of two lands here, I think we would be super, super strong. I don't think I'm supposed to wait a turn on that. I think I just play it out turn three. I could have waited until turn four to also hold up Cradle, though, but we'll see. All right, null attack for two, no blocks. Wow, that is so brutal. Holy smokes. That's three lands in a row. Man, that's so unfortunate. And now I have to pass, because I'm not going to main phase this Cradle of Safety, which means they get to flip their Werewolf. Holy moly. Good beats. Yeah, that's just an entire swing in the game. Oh, they're attacking with their creature that makes two mana. That's nuts. That has to be a really good sign then. Yeah, I was going to say. Do they not have anything to do with the mana? Spore crawler, sure. <laughs> oh, four lands in a row, huh? Okay. This would have been a pretty damn good turn to play a 3-3 flyer that put two 1-1 one -one counters on my other creatures. But you can't know, right? That's just so brutal. And they missed a land drop, which means they have five spells in their hand, so... We are looking pretty dead here. Yeah, Dormant Grove is also fantastic. Yeah, take six, go to ten. All right, we need to draw something good this turn to give us a chance still. That wasn't what we were looking for. Pretty crazy that they haven't done anything with that uh, extra two mana, though. I think that's the most terrifying part about all of this. I guess I should I could have played that pre-combat and then attacked in with the inventory again. I don't know. I've kind of already given up this game. So we can just put the 3-3 three, three on the 2-4 and take 5, go to 5. That Spore Crawler doesn't have Trample, so um, sure, that's fine. I'll take, what, six damage? If we can draw, like, our Brine Comer, then uh, maybe we can produce enough Chumpers or something? Yeah, all right, I think we'll just scoop this one up here now. That's pretty bad. Mm. That was pretty unfortunate flood out. So we're on red green werewolves. Our deck should be good versus them, I think. Could bring in some chill of the graves. Yeah, let's just run it back. I think that was just a little bit unfortunate. Maybe we would have won if I had uh, Mulligan to land instead, but again, couldn't know that we were going to draw four lands in a row after that. Oof. Okay, I'm on the play here for game two, and this hand is really slow, but I'm going to give it a shot. We have a ton of two 
and three drops that I can potentially draw. Now, the majority of them are enchantments and not like creatures, but I think this is okay on the play. On the draw, I think it's a mulligan because if they play like a three mana werewolf, we would just get wrecked by the flip. Hmm. All right. I might be taking three here. I might be taking four here. Okay. Well, this is not the worst case scenario if they just have bramble armor. Ah, and then the snarling wolf to give it trample. Be nice to have the uh, two mana removal spell here. A little late to the party, two drop. We're in real bad shape if they have any removal here or any of their combat tricks, which red and green in this format has a ton. Yikes, that card is brutal too. This is one of the better ones. Oh, didn't I have didn't I first pick that or something? Yeah. Took that card early. Okay. Um, so what are we gonna do now? How do we salvage this scenario? Because I think I might have to try to race. Well, I guess this tramples, though. That's another big issue. Hmm. Although that's a, the, the Bramble Armor is going to be a problem wherever they move it, aren't they? Or isn't it? Tough stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure what the right play is. Like Quartermaster, put a count on the Skulker, attack for four is kind of tempting. Presence and Bystander attack for five is kind of tempting. Kind of like that. I don't know if racing is the best choice here, but it's what I'm going to try. I just don't think it's going to do me any good to sit back when they have the child of the pack, you know? Daybreak combatants, okay. Well, this is a lot of damage. I guess I'm going to just trade here and take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. Gain one back, go to 6. Let's see. I drew a one drop. That wasn't bad. All right, let's go Quartermaster, pump up both my creatures. Again, I think I attack for five here. This might have been a turn where holding back was slightly better, but I think getting aggressive is still the play. Because I can't really beat a removal spell anyways. Oh my gosh, is that lethal? I guess that's exact. No, it's not. Wait, yes it is. It's exactly lethal, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly lethal. Trample over for minimum five. Yep. That'll do it. GG's. Mm. I mean, it sucks dying with all these cards in my hand, but I don't think we were doing much better, you know? All right, good beats. No way I can block to live. Just way too much trample damage there. Okay. Mm. Scary. 
GG's, let's go to round three. Okay, here's the third and final round of this Crimson Vow draft. On one, the die roll will be on the play. And our hand looks fantastic. Let's go, baby. Two drop, three drop, four drop with Nurturing Presence. Gonna try this out. Had some unfortunate games in round two. Maybe one of them was avoidable had I mulliganed the second game, but flooded out pretty bad after taking a mulligan in the game one. Versus a red deck, sure. Cradle of Safety, not a bad draw with all these creatures and the presence in hand. Do they have the two mana or two damage burn spell here? No, they do not. Mountain, Mountain, and the Kessig Flame Breather. Okay. So we really just need to draw a land here. I'm going to attack, see if they block. If they do, great. I'm not going to use Cradle on that. That's fine. We're just going to play Geralt after the fact. And we just need to find one more land, ideally. One more land get, gives us Gutter Skulker into the combo of Presence plus Cradle. I'm guessing the opponent is also missing a color. Nice, we did draw the land. That's fantastic. So let's go ahead and attack in with both. At least force in one damage if they don't have anything. Presumably they just block the 2-2 two -two here. Yep, take one. And we'll play the Skulker. Nice, and they didn't have anything. That's really good for us. Okay, there's their second color. Black has revealed itself. And yet, are they still not going to play anything? Huh. Well, I guess now that I drew the Steel-Clad Spirit, I can actually just wait as well. Let's go like this instead. I think I'm just going to attack for three. Because it's unblockable anyways, and I'm going to hold up the Visionary. And then we play the Spirit and pass. Next turn I can play the Nurturing Presence on something, and then attack for a ton of damage. I can also start tr uh, turning my other creatures into Flyers. Like, I could just sack the Steel-Clad Spirit instead, make a 3-3 Flyer. Since this has a pretty sad clause on it. Frenzied Devils, sure. Yeah, okay. Let's make a 3-3 flyer. And we'll go Nurturing Presence on our Skulker. And we get to attack with both the Skulker and the Zombie Token. Because they don't actually have a good double block here. Really wish I had drawn one more land so I could hold up the Cradle in addition to uh, using Geralt. But yeah, see what I can do is... Well, you'll see in a second here. 
if they make this block. It's an onboard trick opponent. I can uh, use the Geralt, sack my panicked bystander, make a 2 2 flyer, make this a 5 5. Yeah, they saw the line. All right. So we're just going to make him take 7 here and not sack because we'd rather hold up the cradle then. They have six cards in or five cards in their hand, but they need something spectacular here. And it can't be a removal spell, otherwise Cradle just gets them. Yeah, Lacerate Flesh ain't going to work. Actually, do I have lethal if I just sacrifice my Gutter Skulker instead? I would have three, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess I have lethal if I just do this instead, huh? Okay, well, <laughs> they've seen enough apparently. So they're on like some red black spells deck or something. Um, yeah, they have some expensive ones, so Syncopate doesn't seem terrible versus them. But I'll be on the draw, so I guess it's better just to maybe run it back and not have Syncopate on the draw where it gets a lot more awkward. Yeah, let's do it like that. Go to game number two here of the final round. Opening hand looks pretty solid. Two drop, three drop, four drop with a card draw spell. And a nurturing presence to boot, which will probably go on our life linker. Okay. See, we have double white, right? So yeah, let's grab a planes here. Another nurturing presence off the top. Still not sure how I should feel about this card. It's not been very impressive to me. Oh, are they uh, stuck on mono red again instead of having any swamps? Maybe. Yeah, three mountains, no plays is no good for them. All right. Go to combat, swing for two, play out our kindly ancestor. Four mountains now. And nothing. Okay. Oh. Main phase of braid on the 2 3, sure. Well, there's the cradle of safety if we want to actually go for some nonsense, but I think this turn is just better off to attack for two and cast scattered thoughts. I don't really want to go all in on my 2 2. And since they're not doing anything, we have time to filter out our draws. Looks like they did. Okay, find their second color. So we still might make a game out of this yet. Lacerate Flesh. All right. Well, sadly, I think now it's correct to do this because I don't want them to get extra blood tokens. So, let's fizzle their spell. 
Even though I don't lo love using the cradle, we have two more cradles in the deck. And let's just go ahead and scatter dots now, look for some lands and whatnot. Land and Quartermaster, fantastic. Milda, Lun or Lantern Bearer as well. So this Brinecomber might start popping off here in a moment. Also Quartermaster and then Copy Quartermaster is a pretty nasty line. Yeah, we have a lot of value in our graveyard. Another Lacerate Flesh, okay. We just want to draw more Cradles with this hand. Went from no creatures to four creatures rather quickly. Hopefully they don't have that uh, three mana instant that deals two damage to all non-vampire creatures. Oh, okay. Man, that was really lame. That was not what we wanted to have happen, but... Oh, I don't even go back to the game. Yeah, so we were about to pop off there with the Brian Comer. The opponent was just on red-black. They didn't really draw much. So sadly, rounds two and three were not super uh, impressive. I really wanted to try to go off a little bit more with this deck. Round one was nice. We got to do our thing pretty uh, well. But yeah, first look at Crimson Vow here. Drafted a deck I haven't drafted before. The blue-white uh, Auras slash Disturb deck. It was pretty fun overall. I wish we had some better games with it, but... Uh, Definitely something to look for in your drafts because this card does have some power. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out all of my other content here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. We'll see you back next time.